Um, you know, I thought uh, they both pretty much said the same thing that, you know, short version is had a rough start in terms of um, adjusting to the new system and, you know, um, figure out w what, you know, what exactly Coach, uh, Coach Scott wants from me in terms of, and as it relates to all the new players and then, you know, knew everything that was going on. And then um, as time went on, it just felt like there was good progression. Um, There's improvement uh, throughout the course of the year and um, all the way up until the end. Uh, I think that's uh, that was the 30 second, you know, summary that they gave me, and I would say, I, you know, I'd say it's accurate. What did you think let, allowed you to, I guess, especially after the All Star break, it seemed like you started to really become comfortable offensively, especially. Yeah, what, it's what funny. Mitch, was... Mitch asked me the same question. Um, you know, I think for me, from a personal standpoint, just getting away helped. Um, just you know, when you know when you're in it and you're trying to figure everything out and you're trying so hard every day, sometimes the best thing to do is actually just not to try and just to get away for a little bit. That was helpful for me. I think from a team standpoint, um, we started changing things up just with injuries and guys going down. We went uh, started speeding up the game, opening up the floor, moving Ryan to the stretch four, um, running a lot more random pick and rolls and drags and um, angles and. You know, it's no surprise. That's that's what I'm most comfortable in. That's what allows me to flourish. And um, so I thought that, um, you know, as we evolved into that as an offense, you know, in terms of the offensive end of things, and um, you know, again, more injuries and extended playing time and things like that. Um, I think it all just kind of, you know, uh, went in together, and I was able to just kind of get more of a rhythm, get more comfortable with what, with the system and what's going on. And um, I think that's. You know, it was just a lot of things going happening at once. Hey, John, what are your priorities for free agency? Uh, my priorities for free agency. Um, you know, uh, I haven't even spoken with my agents about it. <laughs> so let me think. Um, I just want to, I just, I would say the biggest thing for me for free agency is to, to you know, make a good decision in terms of um, where I want to be and where I think would fit uh, well for me. I um, think that's about it, I guess. Um, nothing really beyond that. Um, I'm not too worried about uh, the years or, the, you know, I don't have any goal on the years or a number, you know, what I'm getting paid or anything like that. I think for me, just, um, I want to find, find a good place, uh, a good place and hopefully the best place for, uh, that I could fit in it. So it's more of just your role and how you feel like you fit into whatever. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, I, yeah, I think that's important for me. Um, you know, I think I'm 26 right now, and by the time next season starts, I'll be 27, kind of going into, you know, the physical prime of a, of a athlete. And, uh, you know, I just feel like I want to be able to find a good fit for me and, and then do the best I can in, in, you know, wherever that is. And, you know, I know everyone's going to ask and or there's going to be questions. And, you know, I've definitely not ruled out here um, in, in terms of um, what's going on. And I... You know, I was talking to the you know coach and, and Mitch, and um, they obviously have a lot of things going on with free agency, the draft, and all that. But um, I thought that we made a lot of progress in terms of them um, learning about who I am as a player and as a person, and me learning about um, who they are and what they want and what they expect on the court. And so I thought, you know, similar to me, or like my uh, evaluation of my own performance on the court this year, I feel like. Um, they learned a lot about me, and we're able to kind of grow and improve in terms of everything that's going on um, sure. here. Yeah. Do you feel like the natural progression that you guys made together, both sides made, would be enough to, to kind of make a make good situation for you in the future? Would some things need to change in terms of the offense and what, and what Byron is asking? You know? uh, I mean, I think, like, you know, it, it's, it's never going to be perfect. And I think right now, um, you know, I'm definitely um, encouraged and, and very optimistic in terms of the progress that was made. Um, towards, you know, from, you know, if you talk to me in December or January, I have a very different opinion than what I do now in April. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I do think there's a lot of things done. And, and so um, it's more about the progression or where we're headed versus, like, 
you know, walking in and having everything be perfect or exactly the way I want it to be or catered totally towards me. That's not what it's about. So, yeah, I do think we're in, headed in the right direction, and that's all I can ask for. What was uh, December and January like for you? It was tough, you know, just different roles. And, um, you know, it's one thing I went through, you know, losing my starting position in Houston, but we were a playoff team and we were doing well. And here we were at the bottom of the standings and setting all types of records in the wrong way. And, um you know, I'm an a- I'm an athlete. I'm a competitor, and I care very, very much about my job. And um, it hurt. You know, it, it was it was tough. Jeremy, was there was there ever a point in the season when you felt like this just wasn't the place for you? Um, not, you know, I I, I get really uh, scared to say absolutes. Um, and so you know, I don't think there was a time in the season where it was, I you know, I know how t- fast things change in this league. Um, there was a time when I thought I would never be a part of this league, and then when I did get into the league, there was times when I thought this league wasn't for me. So now, um, when I go through tough situations, uh, it's more about trusting God and having that faith that everything, uh, he has a perfect fl- plan and he can change things overnight. If anyone knows that, I know that. Things can change overnight. And so I never really, um, like I said, even now sitting here, I'm not I'm not ruling anything out. And, uh, and you know, and um, I, I don't know where I'm going to be next year, but... Um, never say never, and, and I would definitely, ke- definitely keep this open. It's not like this is, you know, last resort. What if you think your knee's gonna need a procedure? Is there what? Oh no, no, knee's knee's good to go. Um, in terms of, you know, we're going through the process. I started running and cutting today, um, and then, uh, you know, hopefully tomorrow or the day after. Um, I just want to, you know. Um, play a little one-on-one and and you know I'm pretty much there I'm able to play one-on-one um, I think it's um, it feels great we got all the swelling out there's a hundred percent range of motion and there's no pain um, so that's good what feedback did they give you Mitch and Byron as far as how they might see it uh, yeah they were just talking about um, those two separate <coughs> meetings so let's see you know, Coach Scott was kind of just talking about being able to put on different hats in terms of who I am. Just, you know, my first instinct is to attack, attack, and uh, sometimes, you know, facilitate a little more. And then, um, you know, Mitch kind of talked about getting into pain and picking up your dribble, um, which, I, you know, is very true as well. Um, and so uh, I think I think that was kind of the feedback that I received, which, yeah, I would agree with. How about just, like, free agency? Oh, uh, sorry. Um, no, uh, we it, it, like it's the same thing that I kind of said earlier. I was basically saying what they were saying too, because I know it's true. Um, they have to go through the draft to see what they get, then the actual draft or the lottery, then the draft, and then uh, free agency. You know, I think for me, um, that's kind of why I just haven't really thought or talked much about it. Is just like I know there's a lot of missing pieces that have to fall into place before I really know what everything's going to look like uh, in, in regards to me. Jim, it seemed like at least at points during the year, a lot of the criticism that Byron had of the toughness of the team, the toughness of individual players, and things like that, some of that was game view. Was that, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that was aimed at me or not, but I think uh, our respect for each other grew as the season went on. Um, and he saw some of the stuff that I played through, and I probably, you know, had no business playing through. And um, and I think uh, you know, toughness is is not about how how lar- loud you verbally talk or whatever. I think toughness is showing up every day and doing your work. Um, I think toughness is ex- you know sacrificing for the team and and still giving your best effort, finding a way to get it done, and um, finding a way to be effective and, and to improve. And I thought those were things that I did throughout the course of the season. And um, like I said, his his respect for me and my respect for him, you know, has grown um, just steadily throughout the course of the season. How so? I mean, I just think it's evident by him, um, you know, from his standpoint, whether it's, you know, playing me more, um, giving me more minutes or, you know, putting me back in the starting lineup or, um, you know, um, running specific plays or trying to get me going, different things like that just shows that, um, you know, he he's growing in terms of how he sees me as a player. And then for me, 
um, understanding what he wants, um, figuring out, you know, this is his style or this is what he expects from me or from a point guard and doing what I need to do, to the changes I need to make to, to go towards that. I think, you know, his comments that he um, had said the other day about, you know, his critique on me and my reproach to that, I think, you know, that shows, you know, that we've we've uh, come a long way from, from where we were before. Is there a Do you want to come back? Yeah, I mean, that would be great. You know, I think for me, um, Again, you know, it's it's there's so much that needs to happen, but yeah, like I said, you know, that would be an, definitely an option for me that I would consider. You know, I've, I'm here. I I love the city. Uh, I love the fans. I'm comfortable, and uh, you know, I'd definitely consider that for sure if if that's an option. You may be the only guy in the league whose <coughs> diehard fans can match Kobe's diehard fans <laughs> intensity. <laughs> I'm sure you're aware of that. What what is that like as a player to have that type of fervent <coughs> It's, uh, I love it. I love it. Um, you know, you think for me, I've seen it. I've gone through it. I've seen a lot of fans come and go, and it's what can you do for me today, and if you can't do anything for me today, I'm on to the next thing. But uh, my real fans, my true fans, they're with me till I die. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I know that, I love that, and I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I'm so grateful for that. Um, I, I, uh, yeah, they're the best. May they might annoy other people, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're ruined. They're ruined for me. I'm not gonna complain. Is it, is it hard though? Because so much of it is, you know, I think they're protective of you, but they're also protective of sort of you as a concept, as a, you know, as a Chinese basketball player, as all, you know, all these different things that you kind of represent right. as one person. You know, there just aren't. There aren't a lot of other people for them to funnel some of that energy into? Is that a hard burden to carry? Uh, so you're just saying I'm just kind of like, uh, <laughs> no, <I'm not> you know, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> they got no one else to root for, so they figure they root for you. <laughs> no, nah, I'm messing with you. Um, you know, I think for me, it's, it's I, I, I've, let, I've let that go. You know, I understand what my platform is. I understand who I need to be as a person. And everything I've always tried to be about is just authenticity and being genuine. You know, exactly what I say here is what I want to want to be able to execute when when there are no cameras. And, um, you know, hopefully I, I'll be, I'm able to impact other people and be a positive role model. Um, but in terms of day to day, you know, I don't think going to a game thinking I need to play well because there's, you know, a bunch of people watching and they're counting on me. I think for me, I go into games saying I got to play for God. And when I do that, I can Good or bad, I can go home and, 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 and have peace. Hey, Jeremy, it seems clear in your career that you're best when you're running the screen roll and running some of those things like you'd mentioned that's worked. What's the balance in, in, okay, if a coach wants you to do something a different way and it may not suit your skill set versus when you're looking at options? How do you how do you balance all that? How did that work this season? How does that work for you next season? Uh, I mean, that's on me, you know. That's, that's my next challenge. That's what I want to um, – uh, take uh, face on this summer is is um, you know my name's been thrown around a lot but I really haven't played that many games I really haven't had that much experience in this league you know um, my rookie year I didn't play um, I've been through injuries and whatnot but um, I'm still growing as a player and, and sometimes people forget that um, um, pe that I, I'm still relatively young you know and and you know a year and a half of no playing at all you know taking off in a five-year career, I've really only played three and a half years, and and you know there's just so much so much more to learn. This is my first year in a different system, and um, now I know I've been through it, I've seen it, I've come off the bench, I've started, I've not played at all, I've played every, almost every minute of a game, and so I've had a, a wide array of experiences, and now I want to be able to make sure that I evolve my game to be um, someone who's not contingent on anything um, other than just you know, me impacting the game. That's my goal. And, uh, you know, it's an exciting challenge, and I'm looking forward to it. You had mentioned the critiques of Byron Scott, and he had told us that one of the things he loved about you is that you were, you were able to take the criticism. Is that because you've gone through so much of that in your career? Um, I think that's just how I am, you know. I, I'm, I'm the kid who would come home with an A-, minus, and my mom would be like, why didn't you get an A? <laughs> um, you know, and um, it's always been tough love with my, with my parents. Um, and, and I think that's just how I was, uh, I was raised. And I never, ever doubted how much my parents loved me. But I knew, it was very obvious when I knew that they knew I had more to give. And so 
Um, I think being raised in that in that environment was helpful for me. And then I think, you know, going through a lot of what I went through, just being really the only Asian in basketball growing up and everywhere I went and dealing with that and being overlooked many times, I think um, crit criticism and people doubting or people speculating doesn't bother me anymore because I know as long as I stay on this path, you know, it's a marathon journey. And um, there's a lot of people that I, you know, I bypass that I never thought I would. And, and so I think for me it's just um, – it's always been it's all I've always seen it as a good opportunity you know if someone's criticizing you then um, you you take it for what it's worth and you try to make as much out of it as possible you know I think uh, my biggest takeaway from from my experience with Kobe is just um, the mental side of things um, you know, early on in the season, he gave me adv a lot of advice about how to watch film, how to think through the game, how to approach a game. Um, you know, I remember there was one game where he was really struggling um, in the first half, and then at halftime, he was just laying there, like, with a towel over his head, and I didn't know what was going on. It was kind of weird, to be honest. But in the second half, he just came out and just exploded. And later, he texted me. He was like, um, you know, you know, during that time when I had my towel over my head, I was just thinking about, you know, playing with, you know, the mindset that he was talking about. And I won't share everything he said, but it was just seeing him do that, you know, helped me. And now that, you know, I've, I've feel like I've uh, learned from him and seen, and I, you know, I had a film session with him earlier about how he, like the stuff he looks at when he watches film. I think I'm going to take all of that with me. Um, whether I come back or not during the summer, I know I'm going to be able to, take what what he's done and how he approaches the game and I'm going to be able to apply that in, in you know to me specifically